Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Always a pleasure to welcome Greg Steer from Dare to Share. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Susie. So, first of all, before we get too into business, let's find out how you are doing. How are you doing in this age of weirdness? Oh, I'm doing great. Actually, I'm a traveling evangelist who's not traveling that much. So <laughs> it's been uh, great to do preaching from Zoom from home and hanging out a little bit more with my family and mm. reading some books I've been wanting to read and doing some projects I've been wanting to do. So it's actually been a kind of a reset in the steer household. It's been really good. I think a lot of people would say that, that we've learned how to do some things better, the pace of our lives improved, and we started having to get a little creative as far as how we kept doing work. So what did you find as far as being able to do Zoom kinds of meetings and still be able to have your important outreach? You know, we found, I mean, it's we can work remotely, uh, we prefer, obviously, being with each other because a lot of creativity is missed just on a Zoom call, and I think people get Zoomed out, mm-hmm. zoomed out. Mm-hmm. But it's possible, and, um, you know, we're starting to creep back to normalcy. I've also probably done more preaching than I had scheduled because everybody and their brother wants me to do a 10-minute short lesson for their group or youth group or conference. And so it's, it's getting me busy. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm also working on a new book, so this is a good summer not after oh. not having to be on the road. Awesome. Tell us about the book. Well, I don't know for sure what the title's going to be, but uh, it's the idea is um, it's a really kind of my story of my family and a radical conversion to Christ. I was raised uh, in an inner city, very violent inner city home. Um, my uncles were street fighters and bodybuilders. My mom was a partier. I was a result of the party. And wow. one by one, a preacher from the suburbs, whose nickname was Yankee, even though he spoke with a southern accent, reached my <laughs> whole family for Christ. And wow. almost all the stories in the book happened by the time I'm age 15. So it's just about the power of the gospel wow. to change a life, a family. And it's a messy process. It wasn't instant transformation. My uncles would come to Christ, and then they'd start sharing Christ, and if somebody didn't respond, you know, they may take you out. So it was a, it was a <laughs> slow process of sanctification, but, you know, the gospel changes everything. And I think now, especially in this culture, where there's so much conflict and so many challenges, we need to rely on the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes to really change every situation through the power of the gospel. It really seems like your message is so timely. It's almost like how perfect to have this quarantine time to be able to write the book that is so needed right now for the violence in our culture. Your thought on that? Well, you know, Thoreau said, for every thousand Hacking at the leaves of evil, one strikes at the root. Mm. And I think there's a lot of people in this culture that are trying to hack at the leaves of evil. And you got to appreciate that, right? Right. But, but that'll keep you busy. Only, yeah, that'll keep you busy, but it won't really solve the problem ultimately. Yes. And ultimately, what's going to solve the problem of racism and hate and equality and all that, or inequality and all the stuff that's out there, um, is you know, the message of a God who loved us, we rebelled against him. As a result, all the sin and fracturing and struggles that we encounter as humans has entered into the human race, and religion can't solve it. Sins can't be removed by good deeds. It's like, Mm -hmm. you know, putting Mm -hmm. white frosting on a burnt cake, right? Yes. So Jesus, the only innocent being in this universe, died... The ulti- you know, he suffered the ultimate injustice. The creation that he had created crucified him, but he bore our sin, and <clears throat> he rose again. He offers you life and hope and restoration and reconciliation and equality, all this stuff that flows out from the gospel like a mighty river. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think we need to preach the gospel more and the full implications of that, because if I'm living the gospel, I love everyone. Yes. And I treat everyone well. <clears throat> I pray for my enemies. And um, so that's what we're trying to do is get 
at Dare to Share get teenagers to look at this as the ultimate cause as spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so even this summer, we do a full week training called Lead the Cause, where they'll, for a full week they'll be trained, equipped, and mobilized to pray for people, to care for people, and to share the gospel with people. So that's what we want to do with every team. You what know, reach does, them all with the hope of it sounds awesome. What does that look like? Uh, what does the summer program look like when you're having to also, you know, put all the social distancing and so forth into place? Yeah, so we last summer we did five live full week events called Lead the Cause. And because we, we call the Great Commission the Cause, because Great Commission to a teenager just sounds like a bunch of money somebody made on a real estate deal, right? That was a Great Commission. <laughs> <laughs> so... Kids are into causes, so we call it the cause, and we want the students to lead the cause. Well, we had five live events last year for a week all across the nation. This year, no live events. Well, one virtual event yeah. last week of July where students, whether from their own living rooms or if they can gather in small groups of up to 10 or they can get together in youth groups depending on their state, gather together, they're equipped to pray, and then there's a prayer experience that they do at their own uh, schools, uh, even outside and, you know, around the school. They're equipped to care. And that, that may not mean, you know, collecting canned food door to door because of the coronavirus, but right. it can mean texting all your friends and saying, hey, how can I pray for you? How are you doing? Mm. And it could mean being outside and from six feet away with a mask on saying, hey, how are you, how are you holding up during this pandemic? And is there any way I can pray for you? And then they're equipped to share the gospel using our Life in Six Words app. And with that, um, they can do it, you know, from six feet away, or there's a portion of the app they can send out as an audio story. So it's a pandemic-proof way to articulate the gospel through your app to all your friends. I think so, not a coincidence that you had that developed about a year before this all happened. So you've got the technology just ready to go. It's like... Uh, you know, wheels on the ground, ready to roll. Yeah, the Lord has been kind of, actually, when this uh, pandemic hit, we didn't have the audio story functionalities, but we talked to our um, app developer, and within four weeks, wow. so by the I think at the end of March, we had this whole new, or by Easter, Sunday is when it came out, we had this whole new way for kids to share the gospel in a pandemic-proof way. Wow. And so it's a free app, and actually you don't have to be a teen to use it. Uh, just go to the App Store or Google Play and look up Life in Six Words. It's a really cool way to uh, share the gospel of Christ. It is, and I want to swing around back to that. But right now, first, I want to talk to you about these young people that you work with. Do you realize, and I'm sure you do, that the seniors graduating this year that missed out on everything because senior, it makes me want to cry. They didn't get to go to a prom or have their graduation or their sports banquets or any of those cool things, spring plays, music things, all the stuff that you remember from high school. None of that happened for them. They were born when September 11th happened in 2001. So you look at these kids who came into the world with that in the background and then they're graduating from high school with this in the background. What is special about these kids? Because it seems like they're almost being prepared to really have their metal tested the whole way through. Well, there is something special. I actually speak from experience. My son is a high school senior, mm. and uh, you know his prom was canceled. He doesn't graduate till July 16th in a, you know, six feet apart ceremony right. with limited attendance. So what I did, just, just so you know, on a side note, um, I, I pulled off a thing with a group of friends and partners, including Interlink and Dare to Share, obviously, which, which I founded. And uh, we did the National Senior Send-Off. Oh, cool. And it was a um, one-hour program that CBN actually aired live. Yes. That yeah, and, and basically NFL football players, professional athletes, prof you know, uh, top Christian musicians, David Crowder, Toby Mack, yes. and others. We had a high school senior speaker, and then I spoke. People can watch it on nationalseniorsendoff.com with their high school senior. And even if you don't have a senior, it's super encouraging 
um, for I think for you at this time. So it's just in National Senior Send Off. Now, I'm writing that down, too. We'll review that again. National Senior Sendoff.com. So you were the one behind that. That's yeah, me so and, uh, cool. Uh, superintendent at the Christian school where my son goes, mm-hmm. Alan Weed, my friend. And then, I, you know, we got some connections with, um, I preached at the NFL conference with Pro Athletes Outreach. And they got a bunch of pro athletes to speak at it. It, was re- it actually ended up. You know, it was me and a couple other dads that kind of pulled our finances together to pay for it, and then Dare to Share helped really get the word out, wow. as well as others. Well, when you, CBN picked it up, it was such a blessing. Exactly. Well, you know you're talking to Canton, Ohio here, right? So we're all about the NFL. <laughs> so, I mean, right. you've got the Pro Football Hall of Fame yeah. right in, you know, spitting distance from where I'm sitting right now. Um that is so cool. And like I said, everybody seemed to have gotten real creative right now. Like, how can we make things special for these young people? Because they've really, whew, that was rough. That was a rough one. Well, you know, Susie, I really encourage you to listen to it. The senior speaker, Gabrielle Odom, she's a senior in uh, Minnetonka High School in, in Minnesota. And she did the speaking. And she actually mentioned exactly what you said. We were born with 9-11, and she literally chronicles everything they've gone through as a senior class. This girl is 18 years old and one of the best preachers I've ever heard. Wow. Phenomenal. <laughs> and um, she was a senior speaker. She's actually going to be speaking at uh, Dare to Share Live, too, coming up in October. So phenomenal. I just encourage uh, everybody, to, you know, at the end of this thing, we all gathered around, everybody in their homes, we encourage them to gather around the high school senior lay hands on him and pray mm-hmm. over him, and we did at our house mm. um, and wept over my my son Jeremy and called out to God, yeah. commissioned him, sent him out. And even though it wasn't a prom, it is a marker yes. that I believe marked him and thousands of other high school seniors yes. across the nation. So, <sighs> What are they being prepared for? Something awesome, I feel. To reach the world for Christ. Mm. Yeah. That's... That's what we want to do. Every teen, everywhere, hearing the gospel from a friend, I believe this senior class is a special senior class, and they're going to lead the way in reaching this next generation. Amen. I totally agree. It's like, you know, God's hand is on them right now, and uh, and they know it. They they have a sense of calling. Don't you? Do you find that in your own son and with that group that you work with in general? Yeah, you know, I think every major awakening— in the history of the United States, has had teenagers on the leading edge of that awakening. From the First Great Awakening with Whitfield and Wesley and Jonathan Edwards to the Second Great Awakening with D.L. Moody and Finney, um, I believe this next Great Awakening is, you know, you can see it today, no matter what you think of protests and uh, people gathering together, so many young people that are longing for a cause mm-hmm. and longing for justice and longing for, you know, equality and righteousness. And again, all of that ultimately flows out of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I believe when this generation is able to see the gospel as the ultimate cause, mm-hmm. then they're going to jump on it in ways that adults would never imagine. And so that's what, you know, that's what we're praying for. And that's what we're seeing happen at Lead the Cause. Uh, kids are, kids embrace the gospel as their ultimate cause. And, uh, you know, we're not saying other causes don't matter. We're saying, hey, stop human trafficking and stop soul trafficking, because Satan is the ultimate trafficker. He's trafficking a generation to hell. Give the hungry bread and the bread of life. Give the thirsty water and the living water. Build a homeless a home here on earth and one in heaven, you know. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's all those things you talk about are the leaves. There's all those leaves, the trafficking and the drug addiction and, and, and we can, the violence and racism. All those basically have the same root of sin. If we can go through and get to that root of sin through Christ, then that's really the only way, right? Well, it totally, it totally happened to my family. My family, I mean, my family was racist. My family was violent. My family was a dangerous family. The Denver Mafia, the Smalldones, 
called my bro- my uncles the crazy brothers. <laughs> and so when the mafia thinks your family's dysfunctional, wow, it's not good. Wow, and they were a, but Christ came in and went right at the root. And there's not a government program, a moral education, a religion that would ever change my family. But Christ, the gospel, that Jesus paid the price for us on the cross and by and rose again, and by faith alone in him, we have life that starts now and lasts forever. That message totally transformed them. Mm-hmm. Well, it is. That's what it does. That's what the gospel does. We're speaking with Greg Steer from Dare to Share, Lead the Cause, Life in Six Words, National Senior Send-Off. He's a busy guy. We'll be back after these words. You're, you're listening to our community. Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Greg Steer from Dare to Share and a number of other initiatives that he's gotten started. Um, can we review Life in Six Words? I just think this app is amazing. And for some who might not have heard you speak about it before, let's Tell us again what this is all about. Well, it's a simple way for you to share the gospel. Uh, We designed it for teens, but I, as a 54-year-old adult, have used it a couple hundred times. I've never been turned down because it's so engaging. So basically, you ask somebody, hey, if you were to describe your life in six words, what would they be? And they choose out of a list of 14 words like meaning, purpose, hopelessness, um, religion, God, work, adventure, different words like that. They choose the six words that would best describe their life. And there's something about it. They, people just want to engage with it. Hmm. And after they choose the words, you ask them, tell me why you chose those words. You're able to hear their story. And I have found people open up. I mean, tell me everything. I've had people break down in tears, total hmm. strangers, which is odd to me. Yeah. But there's something about those words that help them articulate I think sometimes even self-discover what their life is all about. Then you say, can I share with you the six words that would describe my life? You have, you have your words pre, pre-programmed pre into the app, and you share your testimony, mm. good, bad, and ugly. And then mm. can I share with you the six words how the Bible would describe life? And almost always they say yes. Mm. And then you take them through. Six words that lead to six sentences. God, our sins, paying everyone life. God created us to be with him. Our sins separate us from God. Sins cannot be removed by good deeds. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. Everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. And life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. Mm. God, our sins, paying everyone life. And the first letter of those six words actually spell out gospel. Mm. Um, So... You know, you, you swipe, basically all these all these sentences and these words are on, on each slide. So I tell people, if you can swipe and read, you can share the gospel. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you, at the end, you say, does that make sense? And if it's so, they can press a button, say, that, yeah, put my faith in Christ right now. Mm. Are you a plane talker, Greg, meaning on an airplane? Are you one that engages the oh, person that's a- sitting beside you? I'm a plane, trains, automobiles, <laughs> on the street, How in the grocery store, <laughs> at the restaurant. And isn't that you awesome? You've got it right there on your phone. We've always got our phone with us. You know what's crazy, Susie, is everybody's starting to become a talker because mm. I woke up a couple, three months ago, and you did too, looked out the window, and all of a sudden we're living in the 50s. Families are out walking with the kids. <laughs> Yes. People are playing. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> and I tell people, you can share Christ from six feet away wearing a mask. Yeah. And people are longing to talk right now. They, the number one uh, challenge telemarketers are having today, as opposed to six months ago, is getting off the phone. <laughs> it's true. That makes sense, because you're just so happy to have another human voice. I have at least no fewer, I was trying to count them up earlier today, no fewer than five good friends who became widowed right before this happened. Those ladies are home by themselves, and I think of all the others, with no human contact other than, you know, your phone. Thank goodness we've got the technology to keep in touch with some people. But this is an unusual time, and I think loneliness is one of those things that ultimately can be used as a path to enter and reach out to somebody, 
touch them where they're they're needing to have some contact and offer them the peace and life and hope that comes in Jesus. Your thoughts on that? I totally agree. Uh, the same article, the New York Times article that talked about the telemarketers, talked about the number one day of phone usage traditionally in the United States is Mother's Day. Well, every day in the United States since COVID started is twice the average phone use as, as mo- your wow. typical Mother's Day. Wow. So people are talking on the phone. People are engaging in conversation. People are nervous because of the COVID as well as finances, as well as, you know, everything that's going on culturally. And, you know, it's time to look for a foundation that's firm and sure. And that, found, you know, your, your hope and my hope is not on, uh, not in America, mm-hmm. not on planet Earth. <laughs> uh, it's in heaven, you know. Yeah. And um, that's, that's why I think people are, are way more open to talk than we give them credit for about God and, and the gospel. How early do you begin with uh, Dare to Share as far as reaching out to young people? What ages? You mean, yeah, what oh, ages? Yeah middle, yeah, middle school and high school. So mm-hmm. 12 to about 18 or 19. And that, you know, about 80% of the people that come to Christ do it by the time they're 18 years of age. And so, um, you know, we go where they're, they're more open. Teens spread the gospel faster and further than adults. And um, so we just, you know, really train and equip them. I mean, we believe in adults too, but where focus sure. is... Uh, teenagers. Well, I'm kind of wondering, I mean, isn't it easier for someone to hear the gospel from up here? Uh, when you, and particularly if you can find some of those school leaders, it's pretty cool. If the uh, captain of the football team is sharing the gospel with you, it, you're, it gets yep. your attention, right? Is that kind of the thought behind it? Yeah, and I think that, and you know, the average, just even the average team has got 425 online and face-to-face friends. Oh, man. And according to one uh, report, a, a teenager has 100 times more influence on their friends than a stranger has. And so I, if you're a you know, pastor and you're listening to this, I really want to encourage you, do not underestimate, do not overlook teenagers. Don't look at youth ministry as a necessary evil. Look at it as the most strategic way to exponentially reach your city with the gospel of Christ. Mm. And make sure that your youth leaders lined up with that philosophy, not just a babysitting philosophy, but really mobilizing teens to reach their peers with the gospel. Um, Yankee, that guy that reached my whole family, they mm. only had 300 adults in their church. We had 800 teenagers in our youth ministry there because Yankee trained us, equipped us, and mobilized us. And we shook the city of Arvada, which is a suburb of Denver, with the gospel of Christ, um, a group of teens, because we were mobilized by a, a pastor uh, of this church that believed in the potential of young people. There's been a trend of really trying to keep kids entertained. I know um, my son used to travel with a comedy troupe, actually, and they would go from camp to camp, and, you know, there'd be a really big name band, and and I thought, man, camp used to be canoeing, and we'd have, you know, nice vespers around a campfire, but they were bringing in big-time entertainment, and uh, it, it seems like maybe young people have grown up past that. I want your thought on it, because of everything that they've gone through. Their lives have been filled with major earth-shattering events that maybe just keeping them entertained won't do it. They really need a real Jesus. You know, here's what I would say. I I mean, entertainment, I'm not the anti-game guy. Let's have some fun. Mm -hmm. Enjoy a band. But you hook them with a sizzle, but you keep them with a steak. Mm. So... Like, sizzle, little sizzle's good. Get them in the door, get them excited, get them laughing, get them cheering. But then if you don't deliver steak, like, if you go into a steak restaurant and all you hear is the sizzle but you never eat the steak, um, they never bring the steak out, then you you leave actually dissatisfied and you never go back to that place. I think what we need to do is, yeah, get the sizzle, get them all excited, but then mm-hmm. let's serve them the steak. And the steak is theology and truth and the cause of Christ and making disciples and really getting kids in the grid of it. Yeah. And what we find is when kids experience that, um, you know, that, like you said, they they grow up and it accelerates their 
spiritual growth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're ready for meat, not just the milk. They're, they seem really ready for meat. Is that what you're finding? Yeah, and, you know, like even uh, this October, we'll do Dare to Share Live, which we did in 125 cities last year, a live simulcast event, kids trained, equipped. They, they're trained and equipped to share their faith, then they actually go out to do it. And so I want you to imagine thousands upon thousands of teenagers from Anchorage, Alaska to Puerto Rico, simultaneously sharing the gospel, wow. watching on our Dare to Share Live app, the number tick up of gospel conversations to over 22,000 gospel conversations in one day through a generation of teenagers. That's happening again October 10th, 10 10, 2020. Uh, and we're hoping it's in hundreds of cities across the nation. We're able to see a generation mobilized for the gospel and, like you said, rise up to the cause. Awesome. 10, 10 20, 20. How do people find out? I know we've got a lot of youth pastors and pastors that listen in. Um, how do they get their young people involved with this? All they got to do is go to daretosharelive.org. And that's the number two, daretosharelive.org. And then sign their church up. And they once you sign your church up, you can bring as many kids as you want to it. And what's the cost involved? It's uh, ninety nine dollars and uh, for your whole church. Wow! So one church could bring a thousand kids out for for ninety nine dollars. Wow! We're not in. The only reason we charge is we want a little skin in the game. Uh, we invest a whole lot more than we get out of it financially, but we're not in this as a business. We're in this for the souls, and for this next generation. So our donors gladly make up the, the difference so that we can reach a generation with the gospel. What would you say to young people now who are facing the uncertainty of the fall? They don't even know if there's going to be school or someone going off to college, maybe. Uh, what would you say to them right now when the future, which usually looks so bright, right now looks so fuzzy? I would say you are living history um, I want to encourage every young person listening to this because uh, you're going to look back when you're a grandparent and you're going to say, I lived through the pandemic of 2020. <laughs> you have no idea what, you, what we went through. <laughs> you are living out history. Yeah. And so you might as well play your advantages. What's your advantage? Your advantage is teens are isolated and lonely and looking for someone to talk to. You have the gospel of Christ. Get that to as many of your friends as you can. Download the Life in Six Words app. Send out a ton of audio stories. And let's give this generation hope. Let's get behind the cause, the ultimate cause, the cause of Christ, to reach a generation with the gospel. Amen and amen. Uh, check out Dare to Share. Get your young people involved with that. Uh, NationalSeniorSendoff.com. Check that out as well. Greg Steer, thanks so much for all you bring to our community. Susie, I sure appreciate the time.